Last touch by Pippen. That may be the first loose ball that I can remember the Lakers coming up with. Lottie Divots and John Paxson in a heated discussion away from the ball. The last thing the Lakers need right now is for a player to be ejected from the game. Right, here's another look as uh, Devots was called for the foul. Lottie Devots in the face of John Paxson and then Cliff Levingston coming over. Lottie says no problem. Everything's okay. But first, let's go back to last night. Game six of the Pistons Celtics series started out as a blowout, but turned into a playoff thriller. Late first half, Kevin McHale and John Sally in a genteel exchange. The first half was dominated by Joe Dumars, 25 for Detroit. <laughs> Dos Celtics, 80-62, último minuto, tercero, cuarto. A diferencia en Daza Oito, hay falta sobre Sherman Douglas, se vaya falta de Starks. La maniobra de aproximación. De Anthony Mason en servicio para sacar una falta personal. Veamos a Bill Conat con un fundamento. Kevin McHale con Charles Oakley. Y habrá que ver en qué queda esto. Pues Anthony Mason la línea de tiros anotando primero lanzamiento. the shot clock Johnson to Robinson look at this three-pointer by the Admiral whoa can you believe it his first three-pointer as if it were planned that way what pays off is what John Lucas has the Spurs do in practice at the end of each practice he has every man shoot three-pointers the skill hits John Lucas will make it fun. He'll have, uh, say, Larry Smith on one end, David Robinson on the other, and they'll shoot three-pointers against one another at the same time, and then uh, two by two, everybody on the roster in a three-point shooting game, uh, kind of a light-hearted way to end a practice. Carr with the little hook, but it also gets David in the habit of getting good mechanics on the three-point shot. We saw it made up. Dale had 812. This morning as he swept into the lane with that shot, just clocked David Robinson. He's looking at the official like, why isn't that a foul? David's jumper comes up short. Three on two break for the Hornets. Larry Johnson thundering in. Gets some oohs and ahs for his slam. And turns and yells something. How about some of that? Yells that at Robinson as he goes the other end. Still talking to him. Friendly stuff. Yeah. What and they're calling trash talk these days. Yeah. Larry Johnson doing his best to try to take over the offense by the Charlotte Hornets. You know, the thing about guys who talk a lot, some coaches hate that. Some coaches don't mind it because the guys who talk a lot tend to be the guys who are real competitive. Well, they can. This guy can do a lot. <laughs> that was a big time dunk. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Over David Robinson. Very few people talk if they can't at least most of the time back it up. Gill hits another two. I mean, didn't you find that to be true? The guys that oh, talk yeah. usually could back it up. Well, every, every now and then there's just guys out there that just love to run their mouth. Robinson makes a rare appearance behind the arc and sinks a three with a shot clock waning. Larry Johnson flies past Robinson for an emphatic slam and then lets David hear all about it. It only fired him up. This alley-oop flush followed by a fade over morning serving as the finishing touches of a 52 point career best for robinson john and john just pulled up at the free throw line another call away from the ball and some uh, shoving underneath the basket let's see technical foul has been called on someone we have double technical foul. Double technical on Buck Williams and Jay Humphreys. 
And a personal foul in addition charge to Jay Humphrey. And in addition, a personal foul to Humphrey. We got a chance to look at Rod Strickland and the setup underneath, and then you see the confrontation between Humphrey and Williams. Now, Jay Humphreys was well off the ball, so that meant he got hit on the way by. But now Jay set a pick on uh, Buck. And then Buck kind of shoved him as he went by, and uh, neither player liked what went on. Down to Perkins. And to ask you, head to Gary, lobs it ahead. The rain man will go to get it. And with one flew in motion, send it down with a jam. And on a boneheaded play, taunts Piatkowski and gets a technical foul. That is a boneheaded play. You can ill afford to run your mouth at the officials tonight. They've already kicked. Deadlift trip out midway through the fourth quarter of play. They're going to call a taunting foul on Sean Kemp. After the jam, he had words from Piankowski. Yeah, the official right on top of the play again. We talked about it. The decision making Sean has got to find a higher level of maturity, be able to control his emotions a little bit better. It's a different NBA now than it was a couple of years ago when you could get away with all that stuff. Technical foul on Kemp for taunting, 118-116, the Sonics by a deuce. And I mean, just a great play to even catch the line, but here's the point, here's the taunt, here's the talking to, and you can see, <laughs> I'm not a lip reader, but he wasn't too kind in his comments to Piakowski. I know it's the, you know, just obvious taunting, gloating, and he probably could have got away with it right there, but now he continues it and keeps up the running dialogue, the official right on top of the play, slaps him with the technical. Smart play there is just to shut up and run down court and play defense and let your game do the talking. You know, Sean, a very emotional player, a great athletic play on his part just to catch the lob. And, yes, it was. You know, he was feeling up, feeling good about himself, but hey, you know, celebrate with your teammates. Don't take it out on the opponent, especially again now where the referees are, have been told to really look for taunting just to cut down on all the violence that's been happening in the league the last couple of years. Pankowski to Woods, back to Pankowski to the glass, lays it up and in. The Sonics lead is two. And here's Vincent Askew and Bo Outlaw tangled, mangled, and pushed. Vinny pushes him off. That will cost him a technical foul. 127-125. Sonics by two. 235 left in overtime. Outlaw and Askew get tangled up. Patkowski's laying. Pulls the Clippers to within two. And then you see there, and Askew had a hold outlaw. But now here's the push by Vinny. And this is what gets in the technical. They're, they're, they're okay right now. That push got in the technical. He's got them, you know, again... Just back off. 94, the Sonics by 5, 7, 13 to go in the game. Detlef Shrimp was hit with an inadvertent elbow administered by Tony Massenberg. Detlef had some comments for Bruce Alexander. He picked up a tech and then about five seconds later got his second tech and the ejection after apparently he applauded. Rhodes in the title quest. And so we tell you that this morning at 1.30 a.m., Anthony Mason was arrested by Westchester County Police in New York City or New York State for driving with a suspended license. Teammate Charles Oakley posted bail. Mason was released for a June 16th court date. He's making his debut against San Antonio, and this is what happened when they had a light and laser show with smoke-filled introductions. The fire alarm was activated, and the fans got soaked. When the game finally started, after this couple kind of thought things over, she says, uh, honey, uh, let's stay. Let's watch Tim Hardaway make a nice move right there. Hardaway had 29 points. Rock my world, Tim Hardaway. Hit a nice night for Golden State. Later in the first half, J.R. Reed and Chris Gatling have a little disagreement. Double technicals called. But after Warriors coach Don Nelson heated up, Reed gets another tech, and he's gone. He's out of here which made you kind of think of another San Antonio player who's a little bit of a hothead and got kicks, gets kicked out of game's office. And uh, speaking of that hothead, David, who do you think we're talking about? De Dennis Rodman, right? Right. I, I, right now his hair's aqua blue. I'm going for that <laughs> hot pink number before the year's over with. But, uh, no, again, I mean, Greg Popovich, the general manager, and Bob Hill, the coach, have set out to try to get Dennis's mind right. Now, they can do all the fines and suspensions they want, but I think the key here is David Robinson. 
know, last year, he never really spoke out against Dennis and his behavior. This year, he's given indications that enough is enough. And Dennis is going to lose the battle with management if he doesn't have Robinson in his corner. And I think that's what's happening right now. Game since last December. Danny Ainge had a rough start to the season. He's listed his day-to-day -day after this fall in their loss against the Kings. Charles was mad. The thing that disappointed, I think, everybody, we didn't even try. I think we just assumed because everybody said we got the dream team and we got everybody picked us to win in finals. I guess we just think we could just show up and play. And it's just check and check and go. Well, oh, they showed up at home against Miami. Paul Westfall was fired up. Showed a lot of emotion, maybe too much emotion. He got tossed. It promises to be another classic confrontation. King now being guarded by Gwinnett. And Haywood Workman with his first field goal. Technical foul has been called on Charles Oakley. And G. Rush with the uh, indication. Looked like he threw an elbow, a flagrant call against Oakley. And King will shoot the team. Charles appears to be a little surprised, but there's no arguing with the official on the play. All right, we'll get another look at it. Here it is. Ball going out of bounds. Yes. Charles with the left arm. Charles does it so often, though, and it's not called usually. Flash the elbow. A lot of shots going up from the perimeter. Chris Mills. Got it off the glass, and he's coming to the foul line. You got Oakley and Pippen underneath going at it. Goes to the teammate. Oakley gave Pippen a shot. Wants to try to knock him off his game right now. They know if they be physical with Chicago, get them in a type of pushing and shoving match, that gets Chicago out of the game. Now watch Oakley. Pippen's trying to block him out. Takes him underneath. Oakley locks him and then gives him a shot in the chest. Pippen said, come on, please. <laughs> the personal foul was on Rodman, his second. A double technical has been called on Oakley and Pippen. No shots for that. And Mills will now shoot the personal foul. Trying to complete the three-point play as we check in with Ahmad. You know, Bob, it just goes to show you how hotly contested this ball game is. Scotty Pippen and Charles Oakley are two of the best friends off the court, and they get into something like this. It just shows you that these guys, once you get on the court, hey, it's all about competing. Bob? Oakley's first three years in the league were with the Bulls. Good years for him. This is his tenth season as a Nick. And he'll be coming to the foul line. See what makes Michael very... And reiterating the fines just announced by the NBA, Derek Harper gone for two games. JoJo English separated for one after their fight last night, actually suspended for one. In a sense, separated from his club for one after their fight last night in Chicago. Yeah, that was a strange scenario, too, considering that this is the swing game. And traditionally, in playoff series, the third game has been the swing game. Whoever wins that third game many times wins the series. And I don't know whether that's going to happen in this series or not. I, I seriously doubt it. But for Derek Harper, who's a veteran player, to get thrown out of the game along with JoJo English and both of them will probably get suspended for uh, tomorrow's game it's not an equitable trade-off yeah it wasn't an equitable trade-off last night and if the Knicks are without Harper as is likely tomorrow it increases the Bulls chances so far there has not been a ruling on fines and or suspensions stemming from the Harper English fight when we get word of course we'll pass it right along didn't develop into what it might have Danny Ainge claimed it wasn't intentional but it looks like a provocative act as his inbounds pass goes into Mario Ellie's face the two exchange words but thankfully nothing more grows out of it could this actually be charles barkley's last game well remember he's threatened to retire but frankly a lot of people don't believe him i've been hearing that all season long and finally on a more serious note there was a bomb threat at the rockets team hotel this afternoon the rockets weren't there at the time the hotel was evacuated as a precaution but no explosives were found that's the story from phoenix now let's why is this man steamed man if looks could kill There'd be a lot of dead Phoenix Suns right now. Former Phoenix Sun Oliver Miller, a married man, admits he had unprotected sex with a woman during a season-ending party at the home of teammate Cedric Sabala. The woman told police she was raped, but did not press charges. 
Miller denies her allegation. Whatever they read in the newspaper, it's not true. I did have sex with her, but, you know, anything else is not true. Neither Miller nor Sabalos is with the Suns this season. You know, I'm young, I make mistakes. Everybody knows nobody's perfect. And nobody on the face of this earth can judge anybody. Everyone's afraid of HIV. But, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, I've got tested. I have came out negative. It's estimated that over half the players in the NBA voluntarily submit to annual HIV tests. Yet, whether or not athletes in general are more apt to practice safe sex now than they were three years ago is debatable. The cameraman takes a great shot of Charles Oakley, and I do mean took a shot. Later that night, he gets hit by Charles Smith and wonders why he can't be assigned a golf tournament. The game was a rout, the most lopsided defeat in Boston playoff history, and the Celtics look like beaten men. I've been in a lot of embarrassing situations before, but uh, this is definitely one of them, you know. I just feel that, uh, you know, we got some great players on this team, but we don't have the players with uh, the hearts sometimes that we need. And uh, until we get our hearts uh, where they belong, uh, we're in trouble. The Lakers' championship chances were looking excellent. For game four, the forum fans were unusually vocal, and the Celtics' bravado was matched by the Lakers' easy confidence. In the heat of the moment, Boston developed a battle plan. The Eastern Conference was known for its physical play, and with few fouls called, the Celtics went on the attack. Riley was furious as the combat grew intense. And the game turned on the crucial play. L.A. rebounded and broke for the basket. Cooper to Kareem, to Worthy, to Rambis. He should go the distance. Oh, look out! Kurt Rambis was clotheslined by Kevin McHale, and a hard-fought game developed hard feeling. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, noted more for his finesse play than his elbows, crashed the boards with a vengeance. He and Larry Bird faced off and tempers flared. The Lakers' cool was blown. Instead of setting the tone, they found themselves retaliating, and their well-honed concentration was disrupted. Time was running out for the Lakers. Their overwhelming confidence was gone. And although they felt they had the better team on paper and in concept, they had to prepare themselves for serious combat. Lose this, and it was over. The Lakers were frustrated and looking for revenge. James Worthy decked Cedric Maxwell, perhaps in retaliation, perhaps to psych his teammates. Don't expect any gifts to be exchanged in the NBA on the Christmas Day doubleheader. The Knicks and Bulls renew their intense rivalry once more in the Windy City on January 19th. The Knicks and Rockets also play in New York on February 19th. Team attitude. A running conversation with Stacey Oddman hits and then starts chatting with each other. They try to take it as a one-on-one -on -one competition to me which totally takes away from their team concept. The one thing when you play against Michael Jordan, you not only have to stand up to him physically, you have to stand up to him mentally because he will torment you. I know how to play the game. I don't think they know how to play the game when I'm talking to them. Look for something to get him in this kind of frame of mind. Just like that, in your face. See, he looks for an end. He wants Starks to come back at him. Yes, sir. A confident, cocky team. They've sort of breezed through the league all season. They've breezed through the first round of the playoffs. And... Oh, oh, hit hard by Anthony and Michael through the ball. And Anthony Jordan is very upset. They're fouled hard by Oakley again. It's a flagrant foul again. And now, McDaniel wants a piece of Pippen. I was ready to go blows with him. Both clubs going at each other. Michael Jordan and Xavier McDaniel having words. I felt that I had to talk crash to the bullet so we all can gain confidence. Pippen to Jordan. Reverse and he hit it with the left hand. He's fouled by Jordan with seven takes for a second remaining in the half. 
As the second half began, the Suns looked to shake loose the Bulls' grip on this critical game. Now it's heating up. This is a series now. Oh, Ainge and Jordan going at each other. Michael, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Attacking with relentless zeal, Phoenix chipped away at Chicago's lead. A timeout taken by Phil Jackson, who doesn't like what he's watching right now. Come on, score, baby. Lean in the gear. Get over. Give two coach credit. That was a shot block. And then they also stripped Larry Johnson. Oh, boy. Nice move. Rodman missed it, but he was fouled. That, by the way, was Charlotte's ninth turnover in a quarter and a minute and a half. The Bulls are right at the top of the league. They're in the top five in assists. And any time that you have total on selfishness, because your key players, meaning Pippen, Jordan, and Kukoc, all can pass the ball. That was a great pass. Technical foul on Larry Johnson after that call, and Steve Kerr will shoot that. And, of course, that's a frustration foul, among other things. Absolutely. That's, uh, you know, Larry Johnson's going to get another if he doesn't quiet down. Yeah, well, Ed Middleton just signaled technical again, but I believe now that one's going to be on Rodman. Oh, look out. Rodman quit. The officials quick with the T on Dennis, according to Dennis. He gets one there. He was involved in that altercation with Larry Johnson uh, as he had the ball down to the baseline. So now Dennis carries one technical, one more. He'll be ejected, as will Larry Johnson. Well, it's not to think about it. He got fouled on the shot. What is he complaining about? Loose cannon. I mean, I've, you've got to worry about the Bulls. You don't know when Rodman is going to get thrown out of any game. Yeah, now you see he's talking. You can see that he was talking to Eddie Middleton right there. But he did put him on the foul line. Eddie Middleton is trying to explain to him now. So they hit Larry Johnson with a technical. So you're wondering what can be so upsetting that he is continuing to talk because he's getting two foul shots. It'll be the Bulls know that they have a problem with Dennis Rodman. And the problem is he's such a great player, and he also is a major distraction. Now he'll shoot over the top of uh, Hancock. Yep. And his foul. Now a technical on Darren Hancock. Oh, Call by Steve Jabby. Oh, my. Now he stepped under Kukoc. There's no doubt about that. He stepped under Kukoc. And then when a foul was called, he came out of there and he said something. Now, naturally, we, uh, we're not privy to what he said because he's on the other side of the floor. Nor do we want to be. No. And Steve Javi called that one in a heartbeat. Well, obviously, Charlotte frustrated, but this isn't helping them at all. Now, watch how he steps underneath Kukoc right there. That was an automatic foul because he bumps him. They call it on the shot. And then as he swings out, Steve Javi is right there. He's facing Steve Javi. He makes the technical call. Trying to plead his case with Ed Middleton. That won't help. We keep this up, and Kerr's going to have double figures and technicals. <laughs> Charlotte back the other way. Here comes Rice to Johnson. Oh. Pippen on the collision with Johnson. The foul is called. Flagrant foul. It'll be two on the side, even though he didn't mean it. Scotty second personal, third on yep. the team. Scotty tried to stop the play. And he tries to hustle on back. It's a long pass. And it looked like Rice was going to take the shot, but he passes underneath. Scotty goes for the block. They both go down. And it's a flagrant on the side, so Larry Johnson will shoot two free throws. Take a look at it down here. Ooh, that hurts. Yep. My goodness. And Larry Johnson's had back trouble in, in his career. LJ. Now two out of three of the free throw line. He's the number 10 scorer in the NBA. Averaging 23 points a game. Coming off a 38.10 rebound performance at Detroit on December 30th. Ah! Missed him both. Yep. And uh, coach of the month at yeah. the same time. Here's Geiger. Oh, oh, with a hard if that's a second one, he could be gone. Pips has tried to block it. Big Scotty Pippen on the foul. Let's see if we can pick it up off the steal. I do not believe they called the intentional here. No, they might, and they didn't call the basket either, did they? 
Here he comes down. Pip comes from the back. Now Geiger will go to the line shooting two. Watch the angle here. Okay. Let's see if we can pick this up. Here comes Scotty from behind. He's trying to block the Made shot. The yes, you can. You can say this about it. Nobody in the league gives a greater one. Stockton dribbling the ball. Ball's down. The ball is free. Picked by Scott. Leading six to four. The magic. Underneath the worthy. Slam dunk. I cannot believe they did not call a foul on Byron Scott on the previous trip down. He gave uh, Johnny Stockton a knee and knocked him down. I tell you, that was... Technical foul on Sloan, and I don't blame him for getting yeah, it. That's yeah. what he's hollering about. That call has to be made. Byron Scott was pressuring uh, Johnny Stockton along the sideline, and there was contact, and Stockton went down. No whistle. Byron picked it up, and that resulted in an easy layup for James Worthy. And a technical foul against the Chicago coach, Jerry Sloan. The free throw by Magic is good. He's the second-best free thrower in the league. In the 24, or is it 18 in the 24? That's what it is. And the ball to Magic. Magic out of front. AC throws it away. AC threw it away to Stockton. Here comes Stockton all the way. Put it up. No. Foul by AC, and he holds Stockton. Up. The referee thought he was starting to fight. All AC was doing was holding Stockton up so he wouldn't fall and get hurt. Johnny's a little yeah, short of the trigger right now because he's still upset about the foul that they didn't get called. They call, they call a breakaway. Break foul, so he'll get two shots plus possession of the ball. Gee, there's nothing dirty about that, Johnny. It's a great play by Green. He could have let you go into the stanchion head first. Portland, 345 left and Eddie Johnson had that one dribble off his leg. The Blazers get a break. And a technical. Wow. Is that on Carl? Is he no, second? No, no. Who they call it Eddie on? Johnson. They called it on the Johnson. Eddie Johnson, when he lost the basketball, went over to Fine and said something to him as he was walking down the sideline. Eddie Johnson then walks away from him. It was a delayed technical foul, okay? You, you hate to see this in, in a game like this, but you cannot condone because we just don't know what has happened. And here it is right there. Now, yeah. you see, uh, Johnson is coming now right here. And then all of a sudden, it's a delay, a delay technical foul. Wilkins picked it off and was hit on a reach-in. That's the second foul committed by King. And a technical foul has been handed out to Bernard King. So Bernard hit with the, uh, with the early fouls and did not agree with either. He had something building, though. There was another call or two prior to that that he was very unhappy about, and it all spilled out. He couldn't suppress it anymore. David Jones, the official on the scene, calling the technical. Kiki Vandaway has now hit 15 in a row. Heard around all the sports. The final shot the Knicks took from the floor last night, the last defensive play of a brilliant defensive evening by Scotty Pippen, whistled by Hugh Hollins for fouling Hubert Davis. The call stunned the Bulls, it decided the game, and now the question can the champions recoup? A question for Andrea Kramer. Andrea? The Bulls didn't have much of a practice here at their facility. Phil Jackson did not make his starters and guys who played heavy minutes in game five take to the court. They all did watch tape of the first couple of quarters, but not the last one. Jackson got that out of the way immediately after the game. We did something we normally don't do, and uh, that was watch the tape last night on the flight back. We normally don't do that on our plane, and so we mostly digested it. I didn't want these guys to stay up the rest of the night and uh, fret and fuss about it, and uh, so we got it out of our systems last night. Some, like Scotty Pippen, who got tagged with a controversial foul, wanted no part of rehashing the disappointment. Just as the Knicks had last year, now the Bulls have tortured memories of Game 5. The guys are pretty despondent, very despondent as a matter of fact, and, and, and pretty upset, but there's nothing you can do. That's the frustrating thing, is, is there's no way that you can, you know, there's nowhere to go except forwards with something like that. Unlike in Game 3, when a last second win hinged on performance, Tony Kukoc's shot, there was a feeling amongst the Bulls that, despite Hubert Davis's clutch free throws, players weren't allowed to decide the outcome. An arbitrary decision did. It's been a kind of an understanding that officials don't decide the outcome of a last second game like that, and then it's up to the players to decide it. And, uh, you know, he was a veteran official, and uh, he made his call, and he stuck by it. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, he and the rest of us will have to live with that. There wasn't a complaint that came from this team or this organization last year when, when Charles was legitimately hammered twice on four layup attempts in game five. There might have been a little bit of, uh, uh, of amazement at that moment, but you let it go. You know, if you want to uh, make excuses, you want to find a way out. You know, we certainly have our way out. We can blame it on somebody else, but really the, the, 
the blame lies right here. You don't put yourself in a game situation on somebody else's court where the uh, determination of the event can be taken out of your hands by a call like that. The hot shots and loose cannons of the NBA.